Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Have you ever sat down with a good friend or some of your favourite people over a cup of tea or coffee or maybe a beer or good wine and talked? Not a superficial talk about the weather or the latest news, but a, a deep, meaningful talk. The kind of talk where you talk about things that are close to your heart. For many people, those kinds of conversations are the highlights of their lives. Jesus spent much of his time sitting down over a meal and good wine, engaged in deep conversations. In those conversations, he revealed the things that were close to his heart and therefore also the things that were close to God's heart. Of course, Jesus also listened to the people he spoke to as they share what was important to them, including their opinions, their fears, desires, and needs. And often he responded with advice, acceptance, forgiveness, and healing. Jesus also spent a great deal of time talking to God the Father. Now, we have a name for conversations with God. We call those conversations prayer. Jesus prayed to God often. He prayed at his baptism as the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove. He prayed before making important decisions. He prayed all night before choosing the 12 apostles. He prayed when he was tired and exhausted. Often he'd go to a quiet place to pray and get his batteries recharged. Jesus prayed in the garden in the early hours of the morning before his crucifixion. And some of the last words that Jesus spoke on the cross were words of prayer. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. When you first meet someone, it can be difficult to know what to say, especially if it is someone important that you look up to. A good thing to do if you know you're going to meet someone like that is to speak to someone who knows them someone who can give you a bit of guidance. When it comes to speaking to God, there's no better qualified than Jesus to teach you how to talk to God, how to pray to God. The disciples knew this, and they asked him to teach them how to pray. And Jesus didn't end up giving the disciples instructions on the principles of prayer. He didn't give them a set of rules for a prayerful devotional life. Jesus gave them a model prayer to teach them how to pray. He gave them the actual words to speak to God. He gave them a prayer that they could pray on a regular basis and by praying it, they could learn how to pray, how to speak to God. In this prayer, the disciples of Jesus through the ages have learnt what it is important to pray for. It's imp important because it is Jesus' prayer, the Lord's prayer. And in our Lord's prayer, we pray perfectly for what's important to God and what is good for us. And it's interesting that in this prayer, we address God as Father. This reminds us that when we pray to God, we're talking to our loving parent who has adopted us in holy baptism as his dearly beloved children. A good parents want their children to come to them with their needs and concerns. They want their children to tell them what's on their hearts and minds. They want what's best for the children. One of the worst things a child can do is to cut themselves off from their parents and stop talking to them. Similarly, our Heavenly Father wants us to talk to him. He wants us to have conversations with him. The parents feel grieved when they discover that their children needed them and didn't ask for help. Good parents want what is best for their children and will always be willing to give their children good gifts when they ask for them. God is far more loving, kind, and compassionate than even the best human parent. We can base our prayers to God 
on a trusting father-child relationship with him and be confident that God will answer our requests with wisdom, love, and compassion. If we ask a neighbor for help at an inconvenient time, they might say no, even though most neighbors, out of a sense of friendship or obligation, might still help us. God, on the other hand, is always available. God never sleeps and is never inconvenienced by our requests. Instead, Jesus says, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. God will always listen to your requests and answer them according to his wisdom, his grace and his mercy. And God's also concerned with our physical welfare. Jesus in his prayer has a petition for this, which says, give us each day our daily bread. This reminds us that God wants us to ask for all we need, for food, clothing, shelter, work, health, protection from harm, good government, peace, and so much more. And we need to ask for these things because we live in a broken world where human sin and evil constantly works to hamper and destroy all the good gifts that God gives us. As Paul reminds us, all of creation is groaning as in the pains of childbirth. And we also experience this groaning in our own lives. And that means that we continually need to ask God to work against sin and evil and to work toward restoring creation and restoring our lives. But physical welfare is not the only concern that God has for us. God is also concerned for our eternal welfare. Jesus tells us that we should first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and God will give us all our physical needs as well. The kingdom of God and his righteousness are God's gifts to us, received by faith. And that faith is given to us through word and sacrament by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus encourage us to, encourages us to, to ask for the Holy Spirit. And when we do, since we are adopted by God as his beloved children, we can be confident that he will give us the Holy Spirit when we ask him. Conversation does not merely build a relationship. Conversation also shapes who we are. As we listen to God and speak to God, we're shaped by those words through the power of the Spirit. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray for and are reminded of whom we are becoming. We pray that God's name be hallowed as we become baptized children who reflect God's love in our lives and bring honor to God's name. We pray for our sins to be forgiven as we forgive everyone who sins against us. And as we do so, we become people who are filled with grace. We pray, lead us not into temptation. And as we do so, the spirit continually leads us to repentance and keeps our eyes fixed on Jesus. Conversation is a very important part of any relationship, especially our relationship with our Heavenly Father. When you talk to him, he gives you his full attention. He has so much to give you. All you have to do is ask. Prayer is knocking on God's heart of hearts. And when you talk to your Heavenly Father, then like any good and wise parent, he gives you those things that are good for you. Things like the gift of his Holy Spirit, daily bread, forgiveness of sins, freedom from sin, death, and the devil. So learn from Jesus. Talk to your dad in heaven because 
He can't wait to hear from you. Amen.